How's it going everybody? I'm at Kyle's house right now. This is Leo Poxel TV, Reef Tank Addiction, Season 2, Episode 1. And I'm super excited to be featuring this gorgeous 410 gallon saltwater coral reef fish tank. Kyle, thank you so much for having me here today. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself so we can literally jump in this tank and start learning as much as we can about it. Yeah, um, my name's Kyle. I've been in the hobby for about six years, and other than that, I started out with a 29 gallon bio cube, and it just kind of snowballed into this thing. Okay. So, you know what? Uh, why don't we touch base on, I guess, some of the maintenance and the equipment that you kind of have to like maintain this tank? Like, what, what do you like? There is no sump down here, guys. I, I might have to turn the, uh, the light on for you guys. We'll break into this middle section right here. What's this? Why don't you touch base with this briefly? Yeah, so this, this is, is uh, yeah, it's my apex wall. This is what runs the tank. Here, I have a light. See, does that help? Yeah, help? you know what? I got a flash on the camera. I might have to turn it on. Yeah, okay, yeah, it's dark in here. Okay, so you know what? We'll touch back base on this in a little bit right now, yeah, but okay. uh, we'll start from the top, I guess. Yeah, okay. And then um, we'll turn on the light and we'll take a little bit closer look down here and see what's going on. Yeah. So um, starting from the top here, this is. Separated from the tank here, we got this black acrylic. I'm guessing right here. No, or actually, it's clear acrylic. It's just there's a uh, black acrylic, um, eighth inch black acrylic blocking it out. Okay. Uh, so I can remove it and change it if needed. Um, I just prepare for so, who knows what. Okay. I'm still confused. I want to know where the water's coming in from, where okay. it's coming out from. So each side. Where's chamber one? Where's <laughs> chamber two? It's not really set up that way. I believe in really simple sumps. I always have. Okay. I don't want 50,000 baffles in my sump because okay. me personally, this is again an opinion, I don't see a need of having 50,000 baffles in my sump. Okay. So it's a really simple system. Water comes in from each side. It goes into two four-inch socks on each side. Yeah. And then from there, it goes into either the skimmer chamber, which actually does have a baffle, but that's just to keep the water consistent, especially for a reef octopus. Right. And then the other one is just the return section, the whole thing, and that holds just two 150 um, uh, reactors and mm -hmm. a really really small UV sterilizer that doesn't really do much other right. than clean my water a bit so again I know the water's coming in from over here yeah you got teeth on the right side that's going into those yep. filter socks that and left and right yeah okay so then from there I guess it jumps over to this chamber on the side here where you got those reactors yeah and then and you my heaters are down there as well heaters are down there all okay. my probes the auto top small UV probably really small what, 8 UV. watts or 12 watts or how many uh, watts uh, is it's that it's only like 8, eight? It's, it's really only to keep the water clear to keep this yellow Fair pigments enough. out of the water so where's your return pump beside this right skimmer? in the center no yeah right in the center here is the return pump right there where I see this plumbing yeah. oh there it. it is yeah so where I see that uh, PVC plumbing it looks like one inch yeah, it's one inch all the way up. It's just a and standard. And submergible, wave submergible yeah, return. Yeah, wave line return. It's the apex controlled. And you said reef octopus uh, skimmer. Yeah, it's a triple S five thousand. Triple believe, S five thousand. I believe with an auto cleaning head. Yeah, and I just noticed in it. with that uh, auto cleaning uh, collection cup there at yeah. the top. It just gets a collection cup, eh? Yep. And yeah, how it, does, it cleans the net for you, which I find really, really helpful. Oh yeah, I see it inside there. So yeah, it's not it's really the collection cup, it's more the the neck of it. Yeah, the neck of it is what it cleans. It's really handy to have because wow. I never really have to touch it. So this awesome. skimmer is obviously rated for your amount of gallons of tank or how did you rate I this skimmer? I think it's rated 400 gallons heavy load. Okay. Um, it's what I like. I like leaf octopus okay. and I always run low nutrient systems anyway because I don't feed tons and do stuff. Okay. So it's doing well. Yeah. Um, now will I upgrade it? Most likely because I get bored of it. But it's a big quickly. chamber. It's a big chamber. Yeah, there. it's, a, it's a 12 inch, I believe. And what's the depth that you have it running at? It's only running at six inches. Six in, inches six, only, six eh? Quarter, yeah. Wow, very interesting. What about these filter socks here? I noticed quite a bit of people uh, question about cleaning them or replacing them or whatever. Yeah, I mean, I run them. I have to replace them every three you days. You replace them? You don't really clean yeah. them too much or just rinse them out? No, I, I actually rinse them out and clean them in, in, you know, in the laundry and stuff like that with nothing, maybe some bleach 
every once in a while. Oh, I run the Vertex socks, I always have. Oh yeah? They seem to last a lot longer. What are those four inches you said it? Yeah. Four inch socks? So, I mean, they're more expensive, but they last longer and they clean up a lot better in my mind. So, I don't know, I've always ran filter socks on this tank. And what's, your, uh, what's your take on uh, algae scrubbers and whatnot? I notice a lot, of some people are um, getting those. Yeah, or... I mean, some people say you can replace a protein skimmer with them, you can do stuff. I, you know, have really you my filtration system is super easy and mm -hmm. super simple. In one of these reactors, I don't even run anything. Yeah. Uh, I mean, only one of them has carbon in it and a little bit of GFO, right. which I don't even really need. And mm -hmm. then just the skimmer runs the system, and that, that's about so it. So pretty much you like to make things as simple as possible? Well, yeah. I mean, I have to maintain this thing, especially as you get larger and larger in reef systems. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want a fish store in my house. If right. I did, I would open up a fish store and do that. Right. Um, past that, I try to make it as simple as I can to maintain the key to do water changes on, to do everything. So, I, so water changes. Let's talk about water changes right yeah. here. What do you, how many gallons are you changing? Let's start with that. 25 gallons every two weeks since the tank's been up and that's it. 25 gallons every two weeks. Yep. Fantastic. You know what? I was waiting for a large number, but you, I think, uh, if now, that works for you, then that works for yeah, you, right? Yeah, and there becomes a, a larger gap, I think, as you go. I mean, the tank, footprint-wise, is large. Gallon-wise, it's actually not that big. Exactly, but for a water I mean, change. Yeah, right? when I start, well, no, even just the tank. Mm -hmm. But as I start, because, again, I will be building a bigger tank, the, okay. the water change number will actually go down more and more percentage-wise. Just because I'm not mixing 4,000 gallons of salt water at my house to change it. Right. Um, if I need to, I keep enough salt. I'll show you where I keep like my salt and stuff to okay. do, you know, two full water, you know, replacements if needed and stuff like that, just in case something bad happens. Wow. But other than that, I'm just really consistent. I do 25 gallons every two weeks, mm -hmm. but I also dose and I also test a lot. Um, so you test the water and dose. Yeah, I definitely dose. I, I've, I've always dosed the tank mm -hmm. um, and then I test the water quite a bit. And you can tell, I mean, I don't really have much algae, if any, like hair algae wise. Right. You know, there's bubble algae here and there. There's, you know, some hair algae here and there, but I'm not having like a bloom or anything, so I'm mm -hmm. pretty good. Right. I mean, and when I'm you're doing the water change, are you touching the sand bed? Not really, you said. You no, just kind of every like four weeks, I, you know, I stir it up here and there. Right. It's nothing like a real maintenance. I yeah. don't like stir up the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I just stir up places that I assume that the tritus is sticking or that I don't see, you know, I see a discoloration in the sand. Yeah. Um, I don't go nuts. It just kind of the two uh, sand sifting gobies and the two sand sifting stars seem to keep it white for me. And actually, the orange shoulder does a really good job at it too. The so orange pick, shoulder? Yeah, you actually pick up the sand and chew, chew on it and spit it back out. It's actually quite funny. Good. So either it's a really good thing or I'm starving him to death. So hopefully he's actually doing a yeah, good Yeah, you got to balance it all, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay, so you know what? I'm going to grab this flash here on the camera and we're going to take a closer peek down here at the bottom. We figured out how the, the top filtration system works and let's just see, you know, what, what's going on down here, the brains of it, I guess. Yeah. Because once you're hooked, like a dick to reef keeping, thinking about your tank, yeah, even when you're sleeping, maintaining your levels, keeping them from peaking, beginner or pro, yeah, happy reefing, it's in our blood, it's like we're